So you're thinking about starting your own real estate brokerage, watch this entire clip because I can save you years of heartache and headaches. What's up guys, Steve at Steven Vessel. I'm gonna show you exactly how to start your own real estate brokerage, what to look for, what to avoid, and really kind of dissect what exactly you're trying to accomplish in starting your own real estate brokerage. Thanks a lot for watching. You're gonna to wanna to stay to the very end because I'm gonna show you some creative ways to open up shop. If you guys do wanna go the brick and mortar route on ways where you can generate walkthrough traffic and uh, at a very low cost in heavy, high traffic walking locations. Now, most of the information contained in this video is um, myself and my sister starting our real estate brokerage back in 2006 in the state of Florida. So a lot of the fundamentals are gonna be the same, but you're gonna wanna definitely check with your state and your uh, governing entities. But before we jump into proceeding on starting your own real estate brokerage, you really gotta ask yourself, what is your intent? What are you trying to do? Are you just trying to stay small and not necessarily recruit real estate agents? Because if that is the case, then you might wanna just stay as a real estate agent, try to find maybe a 100% commission office where you can go ahead and brand yourself and you're gonna be able to save a lot of uh, headache and heartache that way um, and also a lot of time and money and, and also liability because you gotta understand the day you get your real estate broker's license and you take on that responsibility, you assume a lot more liability. So I encourage you to really start thinking about why you wanna start this up and, and if it really makes sense for you. But if you're still considering becoming a broker owner of a real estate brokerage, then keep watching. All right, now the first step is to figure out what your role is gonna be. Are you gonna plan to stay small and just be you know, yourself and maybe a partner and you guys are just gonna be selling real estate? Or are you gonna be taking on the managerial role and actually recruit real estate agents, train them, and you know, help them along the way in their, in their businesses as well? You know, back in 2006, when my sister and I started our real estate brokerage, we had the intention of staying small. We had the intention of really just my sister, myself, um, you know, a part-time uh, office manager and, you know, maybe a couple of real estate agents in our company. But uh, when the market crashed around 2008, a lot of real estate brokerages were going out of business. You know, we've been in the area selling real estate since 2002, so when the market did crash, a lot of real estate agents that we've been working with over the years just kind of approached us and asked if we were bringing on agents. And at the time we were not, but um, we kind of opened up our doors and that changed the, the face of our new brokerage. Look, when you bring real estate agents into your organization, somebody's got to be responsible for managing these people. Somebody's got to be responsible for uh, coaching and training and handling disputes and contract uh, disputes and, and all the issues that go along with um, with real estate transactions, but also the motivation and training and so forth. So there's a, a lot of things that um, you assume as a, as a managerial role in terms of when you bring real estate agents on board into your organization. And ultimately they become your clients. So if your intention is to grow your organization and bring on real estate agents, you have to, from the beginning, really figure out who is that person, who's gonna be there for the agents on a regular basis and make sure that you're picking up the phone call for them um, when they need it. So I suggest if this is the route that you are gonna go, be sure you figure that out in the beginning. That was really a struggle for us in the beginning because I was still practicing real estate. I was still selling real estate. So I was quote unquote a competing broker and it was tough. You know, I had my own clientele, but at the same time, you know, pretty quickly we had 15 real estate agents that were in need of, you know, broker support, training and, and assistance. Now, if your intention is to stay small, it's just you or maybe you and a partner or two, then uh, that's fine, that's great. I, I really highly, highly encourage you guys to stay as lean as possible in the beginning. Um, really start to analyze where all of your transactions are coming from um, because that is gonna be your main source. You gotta really follow the money and figure out where your transactions are coming from. Stay lean, there's a lot of, um, you know, if you don't wanna work from your house or if you're, um, you know, in many states, you're actually allowed to have work 
work from your home for your real estate brokerage. Uh, but if you don't want to work from your house, there's a lot of executive suite options in many areas. So you might want to take a look at that before you go ahead and start spending all this money on um, you know, a new office and so forth. Also, we're going to go through the exact numbers of um, you know, roughly what it costs us to start, start our real estate brokerage. I really highly suggest you guys figure out if you guys are going to recruit agents to, to really do one or the other. You as the broker owner can still go out and sell real estate and you know participate in some trainings and so forth, but maybe partner up with somebody else that um, you know might not even be in the business, but they're very outgoing, likable, they're good at recruiting, good at training and so forth, and maybe partner up with that person to kind of create that profit center over here where they're over here recruiting agents, training agents, profiting from those agents. Meanwhile, you're over here still selling real estate and generating revenue from listing and selling real estate. All right, next thing is you're gonna wanna figure out if you're gonna go the independent role or the franchise role. Now, if you're on the fence and, and maybe you don't even have the funds to do the buy-in for a franchise, it's okay to go the independent route. Um, many times when you convert from an independent uh, brokerage to a franchise system, it's usually a DBA, DBA a doing business as. So uh, really, the, the main expenses is kind of rebranding yourself. But at the end of the day, um, you know, I highly recommend that you just go the independent route if you're not set on a specific franchise. You know, we opened up our real estate brokerage, Maxim, Maxim Realtors, uh, in 2006. We, we remained independent um, just because I do like my independence. And, uh, you know, when you, when you do sign up with a franchise system, there are, you know, specific rules and regulations that you're going to have to abide to. But that did not mean that I didn't seek out other franchisors to check out what they are offering. Um, at one point, we had uh, Remax actually come to our uh, local office in Fort Myers. They saw what I was doing. I actually had a whiteboard up with uh, all of our current real estate agents. And then I had another whiteboard with all of the real estate agents that I was in touch with that we were trying to recruit and uh, they really like that because uh, the Remax system is they get a per monthly fee on every single real estate agent that's in your organization so they want you to recruit as many real estate agents as possible they saw those whiteboards in my office and actually invited me to fly out to Los, Ange Los Angeles uh, for a weekend it was one of their um, their conferences that they had out there and I actually got to meet Dave Linegar. He was the uh, uh, founding member of Remax and uh, they actually gave me about 30 minutes to meet with them one on one and, and talk about uh, the franchise system and if I had any additional questions. It was a very cool experience. I did learn a lot but um, at the end of the day we still stayed as an independent. There's a lot of good franchisors out there so be sure to go seek them out. See what they have to offer. Worst case is you can learn some stuff from them. Maybe even pick pick up uh, some, some tips and tricks to implement into your own brokerage. All right, let's check out the numbers. It's extremely important to know your numbers in any kind of business. You need to know your profit and loss. You need to know if you're in the red or the black. So be sure you know your numbers. These are rough, uh, rough numbers for um, uh, starting a real estate brokerage. So I'm gonna go through these with you right now. Over the years, we did grow. We actually went and um, we, we grew into several offices. Actually, one office we actually did purchase. Um, but now we lease that property out. Um, we do have two current leases. Actually, I'm sitting in um, our beach location over in Bonita Beach. Um, and uh, we have another location in the Fort Myers area. So I'm gonna go through the expenditures associated. Office rent on our Fort Myers location is about 1,300 a month. Uh, this location here is about 750 a month. Electricity on both places is 175. Uh, drinking water, call again, $40. Printer, ink, about $45. Uh, paper, $35. Internet phone, $250. Part-time secretary, $2,000. Errors and emissions, $150. General liability insurance, $75. Um, our paperless software system, $500. Website, about $200. Office supplies, about $150. General marketing, $500. Lead generation market about a thousand. Agent meetings we have uh, two meetings a month, and we usually supply um, you know breakfast or lunch or whatever the case is. Board fees 120, state fees 55. That gives us a total of about $7,600 a month, and that does not take into consideration any kind of dividend payouts to the owners or an actual office manager who's in charge of recruiting and so forth. Now, when you're starting out a new real estate brokerage, 
break down your monthly cost. What do you think it's going to cost? Also, you know, go shop for an office. If you are going to go the office route, um, find out what the cost is roughly. And uh, I highly encourage you guys to have at least a six to 12 month buffer. All right. The initial startup costs uh, for the brokerage, we got the first office, first last security, about 4,000. Uh, office number two, first last security, 2250. Build out in both offices. As you can see um, in this office, we, we did some painting and um, built a little kitchen net. We did the polished concrete floors. It's a conformed look in both offices. That cost us about $15,000. Uh, two commercial printers, about 5,000 furniture for both offices, call it 5,500. Phone supplies, miscellaneous, another 2,500. Initial board, state fees, 2,100. Initial insurances, 2,700. Initial marketing, branding, 6,000. Total, about 45,000. Again, if you're not uh, incurring the costs of offices and build out and so forth, um, you can reduce that drastically. Also, if you're doing one of these executive suites, many times they have printers for you. You're not gonna assume electricity or internet or whatever the case is. So again, if you're staying small, stay small, just do an executive suite. I mean, in this local area, you can get all-inclusive deals for like $400 a month. Now, as mentioned, I think that if you can get creative with your real estate location, if you guys do decide on uh, leasing out a, a property in um, a high traffic walking location, um, for example, this location that we're in right now, it's our beach location, but it's actually in a residential community on the bottom floor. It is commercial space, but we do get a lot of beach walk-in traffic here. So that's just added bonus for us for additional sales every single year. Now, these this kind of office space I'm going to talk about, this is not the type of office space you're going to find on LoopNet or your local MLS where uh, people are going to be advertising for it. You're going to have to go out and create these situations. Uh, the first one is uh, inside of a hotel or motel. Second one, inside of a local restaurant. Um, third one, inside of a residential community similar to this, or a lot of times they have clubhouses with empty space, empty offices, um, unused space in a mall or inside of a shop inside of a mall. Um, inside of a co coffee shop. We're creating win-win situations as well um, because you know, you're gonna pay a monthly fee, maybe it's $300, maybe it's $500 a month, and that's gonna offset their expenses as well. So it does help out the business owner. Um, an outdoor mall inside of an industry related company. Uh, talk about, you know, think about the mortgage companies that are in your area, title companies, uh, survey companies, staging companies. There's a lot of in industry related companies that you can go ahead and try to share some space. Um, and obviously, inside of any high traffic business location. So, Look around your area, walk into shops, walk into areas, see if there's any dead space. You could even, you know, you can do a simple build out with some windows and, and drywall and, and create a little, you know, 150 square foot corner for yourself. Uh, so as long as it has the, the necessary walk-in traffic. So these are the situations that you guys have to get creative with. And you know, if, if you go out, look around and approach business owners, then you stand a good chance at putting yourself in a really good position for walk-in traffic that could generate a lot, a lot of leads for you guys. As always, I appreciate you guys stopping by and watching this video. If you like this video, I appreciate you guys subscribing, like, comment below, ask any questions. I'll do my best to reply and uh, check out some of these videos next on uh, how to grow your real estate business. Appreciate the support.